Welcome class. Today we're going to be discussing a velocity banking strategy using a secured personal revolving line of credit with fifth and third bank. Currently, they're doing a 10.05%, which is really not an attractive rate. The reason why I'm sharing this with you today is because this is sometimes there are mistakes that we make in velocity banking. So I want to be able to provide you that transparency where I not only show you all the successful case studies, but every now and then I show you some some uh, either negative cash flow case studies or some some bad mistakes that some of the clients that I work with actually make. We're not all perfect. We're not going to you know, get it all right away. But even in that, we can learn, we can grow. I can share those with you so that maybe you can avoid that in the future. My biggest thing I want you to take away with any of the case studies, any of the videos that you watch on my channel is to do research, do due diligence, ask the questions, as many questions as you possibly can ask. Ask them when you are talking to the banks, credit unions, federal, nationwide, major banks. Talk to the banks, talk to the loan officers, talk to the people that are specifically in that department for the tool that you're looking for, HELOC, PLOC, credit card, whatever it is, first lien, second lien, secured, unsecured, whatever it is. Do the research. Don't just apply for the first bank that you hear me say, right? Because just because I'm saying, hey, this client went with this bank, that doesn't mean you should go with it. It really doesn't, right? Just because I have a link below in the description mentioning different banks or two different banks that you can work with doesn't mean that you should do it, right? The only reason why you would make that decision is because you did what? You did your due diligence. You did market research. You analyzed. You ran the numbers. can't tell you how important it is to run the numbers. Do not rely on me or anyone that is creating content around velocity banking and saying, here's a bank, here's a bank, here's a bank, right? Because here's the thing. Sometimes banks will change their rates, their terms, their offers. Sometimes they might pull a product off the shelf and then bring it back. So we cannot rely on any of the content other than the principles, the rules that we're sharing, right? So there are rules, there are principles that I'm constantly hammering on when I'm running these case studies. And that's what I want you to take away from this case study today is the rules, the principles, the steps, the pregame work. I got to let you know because you can avoid simple little errors, mistakes that can save you thousands of dollars in the long run, right? So with that being said, let's direct our attention to the whiteboard. We got four major numbers on the left here. It's a client I'm working with in the state of Florida. So we're dealing with Florida banks. Although I think I think fifth and third bank might do business in a couple other states, if I'm not mistaken. So here's our income. Here's our expenses. Total debt, 375K. We've got around $2,200 in cash flow. Making good income. And we have a, a, a nice gap between what we make and what we spend. This person had $25,000 in savings. They went ahead and secured it with a bank called Fifth and Third Bank. Gave them a 10.05% interest rate, which I believe is variable. And they're earning 5% on 25K for about for the first five months. So they're going to be earning about $104.16 per month on top of being charged the 10.05% interest rate. Our goal is to offset that 10.05% rate. Can we do that? We're gonna run the math, we're gonna prove it, all right? And I'm gonna show you all the math involved so that you can do the math on your own numbers, all right? And I'm gonna share with you the rules, principles, things to follow by that are gonna help you develop that framework when you are in the process of eliminating debt, when that is your primary focus, okay? Primary focus of this client is to eliminate debt. Okay? They want to pay off their debt first. That is their goal. That is their desire. That is their want. That is their needs. That is what's going to bring happiness to their household despite any other opportunities where they could have maybe tried to go and 10x their income or go invest in the S&P 500 and you know create positive arbitrage and all this crazy stuff. Hey, that's pretty awesome. That might work for some. 
or for this client, or what I'm working with, or what we're doing, priority, debt elimination. So we got to get clear on that, right? So that just eliminates all the other options. Now we're just focusing on, well, what's the most efficient way, the quickest way to eliminate debt that doesn't involve me investing or putting money at risk, right? How do we reduce as much risk as possible when it comes to leveraging, when it comes to velocity banking, and how do we eliminate debt as quickly as possible? What are the different things that we can look at, okay? So two of the primary rules when it comes to leveraging, I take the credit limit, 25,000, times it by 66%, two thirds, you're gonna get 16,500. As a typical rule, in terms of how much should we borrow from our line of credit, all right? Does it make sense to borrow the whole amount? Typically not, all right? Typically not. Whenever I'm dealing with a line of credit, like usually PLOCs, if they're like 5,000, 7,000, 10,000, and the client makes 10,000 a month, or they make 7,000 a month and they have a PLOC for 7,000 as a credit limit, then we can make sense of taking out the whole amount. And I have videos on that in the past. But once the line gets larger and larger and larger, we want to be aware of that leverage risk that we're taking on, right? And always running the numbers to make sure we're not paying too much in interest costs. Got it? So credit limit times 66%, boom. Cash flow times 12, right? How much cash flow am I putting at risk in a year, right? So 26,875.44. This is how much cash additional I have to pay off debt, right? So if I was just using that to pay off debt, then that would be like just straight up snowball. So the goal is to leverage debt to get a better result than just making the extra extra payments but this also creates what's called a chunk range so anywhere from 16.5 to 26 if your cash flow times 12 exceeds the credit limit that would be another say exception to the rule to possibly chunk higher than two-thirds but does that still mean that we should chunk the whole amount not necessarily right we we could right this is a secured line of credit we could but i just prefer not to right i like to have a little extra room always in case of emergency something happens lose my job whatever it is i can create some space to recover right so those are the things that i'm always paying attention to what i like to let my clients know is hey take the win right take the win if if, if we can get a win with chunking two-thirds right instead of the whole line take the win of what that generates take it enjoy it do velocity banking and then we'll chunk again. But when we try to bite off more than we can chew, sometimes that can hurt us in the long run. That's just something to pay attention to, all right? So two rules there, gotta know your numbers, that's another rule. Gotta know what our debt tool is. How do we find a, a really low rate? Just a quick point here. In Florida, there's a bank called Tropical Financial Credit Union, and they're offering a secure personal line of credit at a 2.55% rate, and it has to be secured with savings. And you're going to be earning a rate of around 2.5%. This video is being recorded in July of 2023. These numbers can change, obviously. Maybe one day this bank no longer offers the PLOC a couple of years from now, whatever it is. Maybe the bank might not even be around a couple of years from now. We don't know. So that's my point is you don't, you don't just want to say, oh, let me just go apply there, right? Evaluate your options. This is a little bit of impatience on, on my clients and, you know, I originally sent them some banks and then I didn't really hear from them. And then all of a sudden they got a line of credit and I was like, okay, well you did it. So now we're going to use it. Right? So my suggestion to my client, when I get on the phone, when we talk is I'm say, look, found this bank right here. We can do velocity bank for five months on this line and then bring it to zero. Once it's done, I would close it, get you 25 K move it to tropical, open this up 2.55 and we can use this line of credit to pay off the rest of your debt including the mortgage right borrowing at 2.55 percent literally paying 0.05 percent in costs and then doing velocity banking we're in the positive so we're actually zero cost to borrow quite amazing so if we can show at 10.05 percent how to bring our costs to zero then it's going to be even easier at two and a half percent would you agree pretty sure you would comment below so here are the debts I put them in smallest to greatest. This is the debts that we owe. Here are the monthly payments. Here are the interest rates. 
and then what the debt is. So from here, from the first debt all the way to 606 are all credit cards. We have a P lock, right? So prior to getting the secured personal line of credit, they had a unsecured personal line of credit at 12.4, 12.5%. So at least they went to a lower rate, right? That's the cool part. So they owe 9,000 on their previous personal line of credit, right? Then we have a car loan and we have a student loan, right? The other debt is the mortgage. I left it off the board. We're not focused on the mortgage right now. We're focused on eliminating these consumer debts, right? So another rule that you can do when you are writing all your debts out is you can do the cash flow index formula which simply means to take the balance owed and divide it by the monthly payment and you're going to get it you're going to get a number right so these numbers are the cash flow index numbers right so the first debt $42 got a 2.14 the next one got a 2.97 then a 7.74 then a 10 then a 17.9 then a 60 if the number is above 50 it is a unattractive unattractive debt to pay off if it is below 50 it is an attractive debt to pay off right so this just helps with having you focus your eyes on the cash flow how do we recover as much cash flow as possible right so that's what cash flow index forces you to do as well as velocity banking so knowing our leveraging rules in terms of how much we can use to accelerate this debt and then essentially we're consolidating all this high interest debt so we know for a fact there's no argument here that if I move 19%, 22, 23, 18, 25, 19, right? All of these rates are higher than 10.05%, right? Because I'm not really paying 10.05 when I'm doing velocity banking, am I? No, I'm paying a much lower rate than that. Plus, I'm earning some money on the money I'm being charged. So that creates an offset, right? So first part of velocity banking is consolidation moving higher interest costs and the cash flow to a central location so we're bringing all the cash flow together into one location to do velocity banking right so that's cash flow index right those numbers right there then the numbers over so i'll go like this these numbers over are the interest costs from the payments, right? Use the interest costs. Boom. So the way I did the math on credit card interest is you take the interest rate, divide it by 12, and then times it by the balance owed, you should get that number, 68 cents, right? And just keep doing that all the way down. So to say it again, interest rate, divide by 12, you get a number, times that number by the amount you owe on your debt for credit cards only credit cards only and you should get a pretty accurate read on what your cost will be in that month on the credit card right i might be a little incorrect here it might be a little bit more because credit card interest is weird it, it it has a compounding effect on a daily basis Right. And then on the due date, you pay this payment. And a, a lot of that monthly payment goes to interest. And that's why it's extremely difficult to pay off credit cards just by making the monthly payment versus with a simple interest tool like a personal line of credit or a HELOC. It does not compound the same way. Right. I think a lot of people get this mixed up. And so I want to spend a little time just talking about how your interest is calculated on our debt tool right a lot of people get this mixed up and i've had conversations and comments back and forth with people in the, in the comment sections of, of my videos i think you guys are getting really hung up sometimes so i'm gonna do a quick example let's say we owe ten thousand on this secured personal line of credit at ten point oh five percent okay in one whole year if all i did was make interest only payments right divided by 12 i'm gonna pay 
$83.75 per month, right? 83.75 times 12. I'm going to pay a, a max of interest on 10 grand in a 12 month cycle, 365 days. That's the total amount of interest I'll pay. There's no dispute there. That is how interest works on a personal line of credit, unsecured revolving line of credit, and a home equity line of credit. There's no dispute here. Okay. This is how it works. And then it's, and then that interest is charged on the due date. Okay. Now, sometimes there's some variation with PLOCs and HELOCs. Small, little variation in terms of your option when you make a payment. And this is how we manipulate our cost. Right. So, recap. Looking at this specific secured personal revolving line of credit with fifth and third bank, you take the amount that you owe, so I'm in this example here, 10,000 bucks times 10.05%, and you divide it by 365, we're paying $2.75 per day for however long I owe ten thousand dollars right which means on monday right let's say i took out 10 grand and didn't pay anything into the line i'm going to be charged two dollars and 75 cents but it is not getting applied to the ten thousand dollar balance until the due date so that interest is going to sit off to the side it's not going to add to my balance at the end of Monday. Won't do that, okay? So on Tuesday, I'll owe 275 again. This is different than credit cards. A credit card, right, for the most part, if I'm understanding this correctly, hey, I might be wrong here, but the, I know this is especially true with cash advances on a credit card. If you do a cash advance on a credit card, right, and you owe 10 grand, say it's the same rate, 10.05%, day one, you're going to owe $2.75, right? Then what happens is you're going to get charged that $2.75 at the end of Monday. So it's going to actually add to your balance. So now you're going to owe. $10,002.75 on Tuesday. And then what they do is they times it by 10.05% divided by 365. So now you're going to owe $2.75. And it, it's like more like $2.76. I know what the number says, but it'll it's going to creep up a little bit. So each day that in a cash advance, each day that you leave the balance owed, your interest is being compounded on interest. So it's interest on interest. That is, that is simple interest compounding daily, right? I might have my language. I believe I'm saying it correct here. Now, that same language... The, the banks sometimes confuse us because they use the same language. And they'll say that this PLOC is simple interest compounding daily. So they'll say that, right? But when you run the math, when you actually have a line of credit, and I can, I can prove this, right, with any one of my clients, and I can show the math. When they take out 10 grand, they're not actually getting charged 275 on Monday, at the end of Monday, it's not going to show when they look in their account. They're not going to they're not going to see that interest being charged until 25 days later, right on the due date. So, however much interest accrued during that time, they now will owe, say the what was it, 275 times 30. So it was around 80 83 bucks, right? So it's 10,005 divided by 12. If I do nothing, right, if I do nothing, 
and owe 10,000 for the entire statement, right? I'm going to owe $83.75. So if I just pay that, I'm still going to I'm just going to owe 10 grand that next month, right? And that'll be that. And then next month I'll owe it again. And the following, the following, the following. But see if I'm doing velocity banking, I owe 10 grand on Monday. So I pull out 10 and then I immediately throw my income in. I'm no longer going to pay that. I'm going to pay whatever the ending balance is on Monday, which is going to be a lower amount. This is critical. And then each and every day afterwards, that interest that's being charged per day, it compounds on the due date. So it'll total it up and then be applied on the due date, not before, right? Now, here's what can happen with typically you will see this on a personal line of credit. When you go to make that payment, so let's say you owe 10000 on Monday and then you dump your income in on Tuesday. Let's say your income was five grand, right? Your balance will go from 10000 minus 5k and you'll then see the two dollar and 75 cent charge you'll see it so it'll be four thousand nine hundred right and some change right you'll see that so so five thousand minus two dollars and 75 cents so you'll you'll see five you'll see four thousand nine nine seven two five go to principal and then you'll see the interest get deducted right that's how some banks have their line of credit function, their personal line of credit function. Some, not all. Now, with a PLOC, you may be given the option to make a principal only payment of the five grand, right? And or principal and interest payment. What I like to do if given the option, whether it's a home equity line of credit or personal line of credit, anytime I put money in to my line, I want it to go to principal first. If I'm given the option every time, I'm going with principal first. And then on the due date, charge me the interest on the due date. Because what the beautiful thing is, if I apply 10,000 minus five, I now owe 5K. The interest doesn't show up yet. The interest doesn't get charged till when? The due date, if given the option. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm affecting, I'm manipulating what I actually end up paying on that due date. And that's what velocity banking is all about. If you can get that through your brain, through and through, from one ear to the other, you're able to comprehend that this is a game changer not only for eliminating debt but also how you borrow in the future and how you lend and how you evaluate opportunities you're always going to be looking at cost right and if i can manipulate that cost and pay nearly nothing i'm reducing my cost and increasing my rate of return when i borrow to leverage phenomenal stuff here Okay, so principal first, if given the option, I'm always going to go with that. Then the interest. Now, here's what's cooler on the due date. I don't have I don't need to have more money to pay that interest because if all my income went into the line, guess what? I can pull from the line and then just make my interest payment. So that I'm never sending my income to interest. My income is always going to balance. That's a game changer right there. That's a gem. That's a takeaway. You comprehend that, you're good. You're going to you're going to do great. All right? So I spent a lot of time on that. I think that's extremely important that you get that. All right? You got to get that. That's important. Now, we're going to do a little recap here cuz this is a master class what we're doing. It's a master class session analyzing this case study here. All right, so you may need to pause the video, take notes. Okay, he said that. Okay, boom. Okay, boom. Boom. 
and you're going to craft your whole case study on your own numbers. So recap, four major numbers, debt tool, rules, all the debts that we're going to attack, cash flow index, score, right? Get that number. Balance divided by monthly payment equals cash flow index score. If it's above 50, not attractive. If it's below 50, very attractive. You put it in order from least to greatest. Cash flow index formula, boom. Then you run the math on what is the interest cost right now on these debts, right? What is the interest costing me right now on all of these debts? With credit cards, take the interest rate, divide by 12, times it by the balance. These are the different numbers you're going to get. When it comes to simple interest, a lot, a lot easier. You just take the balance owed and you times it by the interest rate and then divide by 12. So on 188 being the monthly payment of that 188, $95.99 is going to interest. When it comes to amortized debt, so the car and the student loan, these are both amortized debts. So what you're going to want to do is get the amortization schedule so you can get the accurate interest that you're currently being charged on your payment because the interest is constantly going down, right? It's really, really high in the beginning of the loan and then it starts to go down, right? So you're being front loaded the interest. So you need to know where you are in the life of that loan. Are you in the beginning? Or are you towards the end? It's going to be different. So what I did was I just simply calculated as if it was simple interest just to get a, a, a decent number uh, an accurate number it's probably going to be right around that so 93 dollars here from the 240 174 here from the 386 payment if you were to add up all these total cost is 206 bucks and 42 cents right let me just double check because i think that might be incorrect so 0.68 plus 1.58 plus 4.49 Plus 5.57, plus 9.74, 9.60, 95 .99, 93 and 174.76, correct. So it's actually $395.68 on all of the debts. But in terms of when we do our first chunk, in terms of what we pay off, our total interest cost is 206.42. Right. So what the client and I both came together and decided what we're going to pay off. Right. We selected the first lowest credit cards according to cash flow index. Right. These are the definitely the most attractive. So we paid off those. We also decided just to throw this in there. Right. The payment is really low, which I think he might have made an error on. So this, this cash flow index number might not be accurate if the payment is in fact like 25 bucks or, or maybe a little bit more, 35 because notice how on 352 that's higher and 449. So that might have been an error there, but I just left it uh, and added that 10 bucks. But again, could be a little bit of an error there. So we decided to throw that in there and we skipped over what? P-lock because I got a 49. We skipped over car. I got a 56, but this balance is higher than those two. Well, according to cash flow index, cash flow index says go after this from a cash flow perspective. So if you run the math and you add up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you're going to net a cash flow recovery of $533.25. And you rerouted 12.91. 19, 25, 18, 23, 22, 19 to 10.05%. So that's already a savings. When you run the math, here's the next math that you're going to run, the next formula. All right? You may have to pause it. All right? We got math here that we ran. We got math here that we ran. Math here that we ran. The little math over here is a lot of math. All right? But it's, it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So as long as you went to at least the fifth grade or even the fourth grade, because I started learning division, I think, in like the fourth grade, if I'm not mistaken, you're going to be okay, right? You're going to be okay. And if you're really, really, really bad at math, guess what? You got this right here, this fancy, you know, device that has an app in there called a calculator. And all you got to do is put in the numbers. Not hard at all.
right? So don't be discouraged. So when you add the balanced owed, you're going to get $18,003.77. Run the math. Times that by 10.05%. You're going to get a number. Divide that number by 365. You're going to know what your daily borrowing cost is, right? Then you do it again. You say, okay, after making that chunk to pay all these debts off, I immediately am going to start Velocity Bank. I'm going to dump my income in, 8850 This income is split up into two paychecks. So whenever they get their paycheck, boom, it's going into the line. So we're going to say that a total of 8850 is going into the line, a total, right? So you would do 18377 minus 8850 whatever that number is, times it by 10.05%, divide by 365. You're going to know what your daily cost is, right? goes back to this point here. Whatever you owe is the amount of interest that you'll pay per day, however long you owe that balance. With Velocity Banking, we're constantly changing what we owe. It's going up and down, up and down, but it's going down more than it goes up. Then we have expenses. Notice how the expenses went from 6,600, Now we're at 6,077.13, which means less money is coming out of the line of credit. So now we got the 533.25 and the cash flow of 22.39.62. You are on a roll, my friend. Ending balance. At the end of one month, I go from 18 down to 15,230.90. And when you run the math, you get the borrowing cost on this number, the borrowing cost minus the income, the borrowing cost add the expenses. You're going to get three little numbers. You're going to add those three numbers. You're going to divide by three and you're times it by 30 days you're gonna get the average daily borrowing cost on your money. You should get somewhere around this number, $116.63. We were looking at originally, here's another issue that some people uh, experience when they're in the comments and they're talking about Denzel, you're going into more debt to pay off debt. That doesn't make sense. Denzel, why why should I go into more debt to pay off debt? That that's not going to help me. That's not going to work, right? And I agree with them in the comments. I agree with you. It does not make sense to go into more debt to pay off debt. That doesn't make sense. But Denzel, that's what you're doing here. No, I am not. I'm not. Let's let's run the math. Let's run the math. Let's be very very abundantly clear here. How much debt do I owe? $375,418, right? How much debt is right here that we want to eliminate? These debts and this one, did it not add up to $18,003.77? Yes. So if I move $18,003.77 of my total debt of three seventy five, dollars if I move it from my left hand to my right hand, how much debt do I owe? 375418 Nothing happened. All I did was move it from my left hand to my right hand. So did I go into more debt? I did not. In fact, my debt stayed the same. What changed? My interest costs. You see, when, when you guys put your total debt owed, you're putting principal owed. What you're not putting is interest. That's the unforeseen number. That's the invisible number that we don't see. So in reality, 375418 is not what this client owes. They owe more like $500,000 or more in interest, right? Total, they actually owe 500,000 plus, but they're only putting 375 because that's principal what you owe, right? So if I, if my left hand was charging me 10% interest and I move all my debt to 5% interest, right? What happened? Nothing. I still owe $375,418. What will change is the interest costs. Now I'm paying 50% less in costs. That is all we're doing with Velocity, the banking. That's all we're doing. We're moving high interest to low interest, and then we're offsetting that interest and paying nothing. So I didn't go into more debt. So that's what people need to understand in the comment section that you're saying, Denzel, why am I going into more debt to pay off debt? This doesn't make sense. This is a freaking scam. And I'm like, you're totally right. Whatever it is you're talking about, paying off more debt to uh, going into more debt to pay off debt. Yeah, that sounds like a terrible idea. I would never do that. We're not doing that here because I just proved the math. Math is the math. Take your emotions out of it. If I owe 375418 and I move it to another location, 
at a lower interest rate. I still owe three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars four hundred eighteen. Still, so I did not go into more debt. I just simply changed locations to pay less interest than the other guy, which is going to get me out of debt faster. There is no dispute there. Done. Case closed. Checkmate. You're done. Okay. So now that I'm done with that rant, for those of you that are narrowed in, you're like, yes, I get it. This is clear. We did not go into more debt. We simply changed locations. Now we discovered that to go to that new location is going to cost me $116.63. So now the second question that people will ask is, Denzel, now we're paying more interest. Well, am I actually paying more interest? Yeah, you're paying more interest, Denzel, because you moved the, you know, you're paying debt, you're paying interest over there, and now you're paying interest on the line of credit. So now you're making two payments. I'm like, well, let's run the math, because is that is that exactly true? I already ran the math for you, right? Based on these debts that we eliminate, I was already paying $206.42 in interest. I was already paying that from these payments of $533.25. So of the $533.25, $206.42 was going to interest. So $206.42, now that those debts are paid off, became $116.63 which is a savings of $89.79. So I saved $89.79 just from moving from left hand to right hand, moving debt from one location to another in just one month. Savings of $89.79. You have to add every other month thereafter, that number is going to grow and be much higher. So $89.79 in interest, this $116.63 was already part of the 206. So I'm not paying any more interest. We just proved the math on that. So now you, when you're talking to your spouse, when you're talking to friends, coworkers, and you're breaking down a scenario or people that are desiring to teach this and become coaches of your community, of your neighborhood, now you can make that abundantly clear. You say, look, you're already paying this interest, but it was invisible. You didn't see it, right? You're not seeing it because you're just making these payments. So I'm now I'm showing you that by moving it from here to here, now you're saving money that was invisible, right? You're saving it. You're no longer seeing it. And now I'm paying a portion of what you were already paying, the 116. So now here's another perk with this secured P-lock. I'm earning 104.16 for the first month. So 116.63 minus 104 minus $15 in cashback rewards because this client is running $1,000 or so a month on their credit card and they're earning a little over 1.5%, right? 1.5%. So they're getting about 15 bucks a month. So that's a positive $2.53 gain. So I just took 10.05% and made it zero, folks. Zero cost to borrow. I earned, I earned, I saved. Earn, earn, save three things am i still going to pay this 116 yes but i just gained 89 plus 15 plus 104 that is called positive arbitrage that is a offsetting effect am i going to pay taxes on this money yes so it'll net a little bit of a difference but we're still look what we did it, it did not cost me any more money to move the debt i was already paying to another location and that's what we need to get abundantly clear on when we're doing velocity banking because by just making extra payments with that free cash flow right and let's say you start you, know, you pay off these debts over here you get your cash flow and the next month you do it again the next month you do it again when you compare extra payments to what i just did i am ahead of them no matter what i am ahead of them on interest savings i'm ahead of them on cash flow i'm ahead right so the last thing I'll say here to make this strategy even better is to simply say that by the end of five months, once the P lock is nearly paid off, right? It might it'll probably take a little bit longer than five months. But once I bring the line of credit to zero between now, July 2023, and six months from now, I'm informing the client, hey, you're gonna wanna move this P lock eventually. You're gonna wanna move it to tropical. We're in Florida. This bank is offering 2.55% secured with savings. You're going to be earning an interest rate, and this doesn't go away. Stays there on the entirety of the, of the line. It's way more attractive, right? So for those of you that enjoyed this case study, this is a deep, deep dive, nearly an hour-long video. 
deep dive, shared a lot of numbers, go back, pause, right? I spoke slow. I, I ran the math, showed the numbers. If you think I'm wrong anywhere, point me out. I'm always looking to improve. If you're seeking out financial coaching, someone to mentor you, someone to coach you along the way, handhold, walk you through the entire process of becoming debt free. If you click the link below and you go to my website, denzelrodriguez.com, you go to financial services, you can sign up for coaching, right? You can invest in yourself to master this concept of banking, the velocity of money, to improve the velocity of money. Just to improve that is game changing for every other financial decision that you'll make in your life. And that's going to get you that much closer to achieving financial freedom, right? So if you want to work with me one to one, I like to work with people for really a, a lifelong relationship is what I like to develop. The other phenomenal thing about this concept, velocity banking, is it gets you ready for becoming your own banker, right? Where you can leverage cash value life insurance, right? Where you can leverage real estate, leverage assets, and just keep leveraging, leveraging, leveraging with rules, right? We don't want to over leverage. So we have our rules to leverage, right? And then we can say this, we can, we can just use this for a temporary period of time and say, hey, I never want to touch debt after this. That's cool too. So you can be a master over debt and then if you ever need it again, you know how to use it, right? So I would rather teach my clients, my audience, how to be masters over debt, how to control debt so that if they ever need it, they know how to use it rather than being afraid of debt and avoiding it like the plague and putting additional strain and stress in your life by making these extra payments and just like going going really really slow it's efficient don't get me wrong it's it's a great strategy to prep before doing velocity banking no doubt and there might be cases where velocity banking doesn't make sense so it makes sense to do debt snowball but i would even add to that and say do cash flow index because that's going to get you that little bit step further a little bit step further right so with that being said my name is denzel personal finance geek of the 21st century. God bless. I look forward to talking soon. Connect, get plugged in, keep watching the case studies, do your due diligence, do your research, and have fun moving forward towards your financial freedom goals. Talk soon.